Okay, everyone, sit down, pop quiz. How many variations of hidden immunity idols have existed in Survivor? If you guess three, you're wrong. The actual answer is 12. 12. Pretty, you just made that up. The hidden immunity idol has evolved a lot over the course of Survivor's lifespan. It is a huge staple to almost every season after the first 10, and I figured, given how important it's been to the show, especially as of late, let's take a trip down memory lane to chronicle where it's been, where it's currently at, and possibly where it's going next. Ladies and gentlemen, internet, my name is Pridium, and this is the evolution of the hidden immunity idol in Survivor. First and foremost, the first 10 seasons of Survivor don't feature any idol shenanigans truly old school to the T. No hidden idols to be found, so we're just gonna move past them. The first idol is born in season 11, 2005, Survivor Guatemala. And looking over at the Survivor wiki, it's apparently called the preventative idol. Basically a rough draft, it's the first variation of the 12 that I'll be talking about to exist. This particular idol, the rough draft version, the preventative one, allowed the player to prevent anyone from voting for them at tribal council if only because it had to be played before the votes were cast. It basically functioned as an immunity necklace. However, instead of winning a challenge to get it, you had to find a needle in a haystack. Also important, nobody else knows that you have it, hence the hidden qualifier of the twist. Hidden somewhere in the woods, there is an idol that will give us immunity that we can use at any tribal council up to the final four. There's a little immunity idol about this big in a jungle that's this big. Okay, before we get to the vote, an immunity idol was hidden at your camp. If anybody has found that and you want to use it, now is the time to present it. Oh my God, Gary. <laughs> oh man, good job. Gary. You cannot vote for Gary. It is time to vote. Judge, you're up. Overall, the first iteration of the Hidden Idol is one of the weakest, and to compensate for how flimsy and not flashy it was, the producers ramped up the drama in the following season with a second variation that's difficult to ignore. In season 12, Panama, Exile Island, the Hidden Idol was buffed to a massive degree, and all it took was one simple tweak to throw its power level way out of whack. Unlike the Guatemalan Idol, which you could play before the votes were cast, this new idol, called the Super Idol, could be played after the votes were read. Meaning, if you were to get the most votes, Jeff would read the votes out loud, you were the one who was supposed to be going home, you would then whip out this idol, cancel all of them, and the next person with the most votes goes. Whereas with the Guatemalan Idol, by playing it, you're just taking yourself off the board altogether. There's really not much surprise or suspense to it, but with the Super Idol, you get to laugh in the face of your enemies as you play a reverse Uno card, all thanks to Exile Island. We saw the same idol return in season 13, Cook Islands, where Yule picked it up and just like Terry from season 12, both guys made it all the way to the final three, never having to play the idol because once your opposition knows you're holding it, they're just not gonna vote for you. It's suicide. Basically voting for the person who has this super idol, it's like the equivalent of drawing a rock, knowing your votes won't matter, you're just flushing their super idol all while someone in your alliance has to bite the bullet. Thankfully, after two seasons of the boring super idol that never got played, the producers had enough and made another tweak. In season 14, Fiji, the negation idol was born, and ever since, it has been here to stay. This is the idol most people think of when we talk about idols. It's not played before the votes are cast, nor is it played after the votes are read, but instead, in the in-between. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. And I cannot overstate what a massive change to balance out the idols this was. All kinds of cool strategies have been born out of this tiny change, and I am so thankful the producers discovered it sooner than later. It's become a staple of the series, and for some, it's difficult to watch the show without it. It's one of the only twists that has spanned eras, and it's a testament to how strong of an ingredient it is to the DNA of the game. I'm glad I'm not in a thought untying contest right now because I will lose. The one and only immunity idol. It looks good on me. It really does. I'm gonna jump out to jump off my skin here. Move turtle. And for some, that might be where the ball stops. You got the weak idol, the strong idol, 
and the regular idol. Where are the other nine? Well, that's where it's actually gonna get more exciting. That's the meat and potatoes of this video because as we've seen, one small tweak can make a huge difference in how an idol impacts the game. And ever since the idol was first introduced in season 11, we have seen numerous variations, both buffing and nerfing all three of these idol types creating a bunch of variations beyond just the ordinary. For example, in season 18, Token Chains, the Guatemalan idol, the preventative idol, was brought back for one episode, the premiere episode, but there were two of them in play. They were both hidden at each tribe's camps, and if found, could only be played at the very first tribal council that the tribe goes to. Whereas in Guatemala, the idol that Gary found could be played at any tribal up until the final five. This one had a one-use shot clock added to it. It was temporary, it would expire quickly, but it was still a hidden immunity idol. The only question I have is was this idol able to be used before the votes were cast, like in Guatemala, or before they were read, like in Fiji? Because in season 16 Micronesia and 17 Gabon, we saw similar idols pop up in the premiere, but they function just like in Guatemala. Only, unlike the one that Gary had, these two idols weren't hidden. It was known to everyone that these players had them, and before the votes were cast, Jeff asked if either of these players wanted to give up their idol to save someone else. If I had to wager a guess, I would say the Token Chains version worked exactly like the Micronesia and Gabon premiere idols with the added twist that it was hidden this time around instead of public knowledge. But neither Sandy nor Sierra found the idol, so I guess we'll never truly know. Only the second greatest mystery in Survivor. Right, Sandy? Dig in the sand, the next clue you will see. 10 paces? I wonder what a pace is. All right, pace gods, give me a clue. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. oh, this is so brutal. I'm really at a loss right now, but I'm definitely not gonna give up looking for that idol. Oh, for God's sake. Six seasons later in Survivor One World, we had a weird nondescript one-off idol that I'm going to be calling the tribal idol. Because the big twist of the season was that both tribes lived on one beach, the idea with this tribal idol was that each tribe had a designated idol. Orange tribe can use the orange idol and vice versa, which doesn't sound too different from the usual, but the catch here is that unlike every other idol in Survivor history, this one wasn't transferable to the other tribe even if you wanted to give it to them. When Colton was medevaced from the game in the pre-merge, he wanted to give his idol to a player on the other tribe, but the producers didn't let him. But they did let JT give an idol to Russell four seasons prior, so what gives? Because both idols that season from day one were designated to each tribe, and the producers were upholding this, this told me the tribal distinction made it a new variation we had yet to see, and have yet to see return. Four seasons later in Survivor Kageon, we saw the super idol Redux. It was brought back from the Panama and Cook Islands days and found its way into Tony's hands. Oh boy. And for the most part, this Redux variation of the super idol is basically the same idol as it was back when it first arrived, except it's technically not as good. Why is that? One of the reasons I don't love the super idol coming back on top of it being OP is because for whatever reason in Kageon, it wasn't transferable. In season 12 and 13, part of what made the super idol somewhat compelling is that Terry or Yule could give it to an ally to protect them before they went to tribal council. They couldn't give it to anyone at tribal council, but they could transfer it to somebody at the beach before they left. In Tony's case, however, he wasn't allowed to do that. This variation of the super idol was more rigid, way more rigid. Whoever found it basically had it super glued to them for the season. This made it a little bit weaker than before. It devolved the idol, if you will, and reduced its potential to make for good TV. Although it's still immensely powerful overall, and it did find its way into Tony's hands, which is pretty much always gonna be good TV. I'm on a mission. I need an immunity idol. I'm looking for that special idol. And you know what? I'm gonna find it. I almost passed out. I was just so happy. <sighs> and then when I opened it, it's the special idol. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> I love you so much, man. After you see the votes, you can use it. <laughs> Everybody's eyes say, Bing! This immunity idol only protects the person who finds it. You may not give this immunity idol to another tribe member. Follow this up four seasons later in Survivor Korong, and we see the super idol return once again, but with a new twist to it. Two regular idols can be combined to form a super idol, the same as Tony's or Yule's or Terry's, 
However, this new super idol would be even stronger than any other idol we have ever seen in Survivor history. And I quickly want to say there are a lot of technicalities in this video, but I think every word written by the producers matters when it comes to what you can and can't do in the game. Look at Suri in Survivor Game Changers attempting to use Sarah's vote steal against her, but because of the wording, she couldn't. These are the little things that can have a huge impact. So she can't give it to me. She can give it to you as a sign of trust, but she can't give it to you to use. Sarah is the only person who can use that advantage. Tony's super idol couldn't be transferred, and Terry and Yule's idols could only be transferred prior to leaving for tribal council. But the super idol and Ko Rong had these restrictions removed, and once it was formed, it could be passed around after the votes were read. So had Ty decided that he wanted to combine them and use the super idol, it literally cannot miss at all. There is no way around it once it's used. Ty realized no one player should be that powerful and thankfully didn't use it, but still, it is wildly overpowered, only hampered by the fact that it requires two regular idols to form. And then three seasons later, in Survivor Heroes Healers Hustler season 35, we get a new variation of this super idol. As if it never being played not even once in four seasons wasn't enough, we saw it return as a shot clock super idol that could only be played in the premiere episode of the season. This one-off idol was kind of like the one Sandy almost found in Token Chains, except it was a super idol and had all the power of the Ko Rong version. Chrissy received it from Ryan after he gave it to her and she decided not to use it, which then means the super idol is now 045 and needs to just be left on ignore for the rest of the days. Please producers, never bring this back. Later in the same season, we saw the fragment idol variation pop up, a new iteration of a regular idol, except this time, it was split in half. Basically take a regular idol, break it in half, and then in order to have it be powerful, you have to combine two halves together. Lauren had to combine two different trinkets together to form a regular idol. Two idol hunts for the price of one. And once she found them both, she gave half of them to Mike to curry favor with him, but then he chucked half of it in the fire, which rendered it moot anyway. We also saw Donathan in the next season, Ghost Island, have to deal with the same difficulties as he found half of a fragmented idol in the jungle, and then the other half was hidden underneath the tribe's shelter. Personally, I don't like this variation that much. It forces two idol hunts with half as much payoff. So season 36, Survivor Ghost Island introduced another new variation of the idol, a regular idol, but with a shot clock on it. Whenever a player found the shot clock idol, it could only be played initially at the next tribal council. However, the player would be able to extend its length if they took a risk. Basically encouraging survivor gambling. Do you fold and play it safe or take a risk, potentially lose your vote at the upcoming tribal council, but also potentially enhance your idol so it lasts longer. Up to this point in survivor, the regular idol lasts all game, usually up until the final six or the final five, but these shot clock idols only last for a set amount of time. And by the way, if you're not sure what the term shot clock means, it comes from basketball where players only have a set amount of time to shoot the ball before they must give it to the other team. A shot clock idol forces players to act sooner instead of doing what say Ty and Troyzan did in Survivor Game Changers where they held on to three idols for most of the season. The producers realized this wasn't a compelling use of a hot commodity that made for good TV, so they gave idols shorter shelf lives. We've seen shot clock idols exist now in Ghost Island with Chris, David vs. Goliath with Davey, Island of the Idols with Vince and Kelly, and then Winners at War with Sandra. A major reason why Sandra traded her idol to Denise for a fire token was because it was expiring that night. The shot clock was running down. And so why not get rid of it before it becomes useless? This idol is intended to make you act hastily and take a risk. And we see what happens when risks are taken. If anybody has a hidden immunity idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. Jeff, can you give me a minute? This is a hidden immunity item. Any votes cast for Denise will not count. I'll read the votes. Jeff, can you give me one more minute? I'd like to play those for Jeremy. For Jeremy. This is also a hidden immunity item. Any votes cast for Jeremy will not count. Eighth person voted out of Survivor, winners at war. 
As you guys can probably tell up to this point in the video, Modern Survivor begins to introduce a lot of idol variations. Survivor Edge of Extinction introduces the conditional idol. Yes, I'm making these names up as I go, but I gotta give them a different term because they do different things. It's a fragmented idol with two parts, where one part must be given to another player and then both players must survive the next tribal council for this idol to become a fully powered regular idol. It's a checklist of conditions of tasks that must be met or else it just becomes an art prop. We saw two of these pop up in Edge of Extinction with Rick Devins and Chris Underwood after they returned from the edge. These idols intended to both help the returning player get their bearing while also forcing them to work for it. And as far as the future of idols go, I really could see this variation of idol return in future seasons without the Edge of Extinction where you might find an idol but need to power it up with certain conditions like correctly voting a set number of times or surviving a certain number of tribal councils. Perhaps you might need to say mark a player to get them voted out or you need to win at least one challenge to fulfill its condition and turn it from a dud idol into a regular one. Or maybe you just pay a certain amount of fire tokens, dot dot dot. There's a lot of wiggle room with this variation and I'm excited to see if the producers can take advantage of it in the future. Lastly, season 40, Winners at War. Introduced one more variation to the idol. Yes, we gotta have one more cherry on top, the social idol, a fragmented two-part idol where the finder of the idol had to give half of it to another player by sundown. That second player could then decide to give the half back to complete the idol or not and basically throw it in the fire or the ocean or pocket it and laugh in the player's face. It basically could be considered a conditional idol except in this case it's just focusing solely on the social aspect of the game. I like it. I personally like this variation as it encourages players to socialize and politic to have at least one bond, as if that's too much to ask in a game all about social politics. It's a tough game. Tough players, good players, smart, you know? I underestimated them at first. I won't make that mistake again. While the whole group is looking for the idol, I found this lovely new bracelet. I was given half of Kim's hidden immunity idol, and then I gave it back to Kim before the swap, but I can now see Kim's dilemma. Um, you did? I've never really been able to read Sarah, but I really felt after giving her this half of the idol, she felt like this is a girl I can work with to the end. This is awesome. And being in the minority position on a tribe that's really divided, that might even be more powerful than the hidden immunity idol itself. And for what it's worth, I gotta say, the legacy advantage and the 50-50 coin are basically idols too in everything but name. The legacy advantage is a stunted, limited play idol that can only be played at two points in the game, but it's transferable after you get voted out. But it's also kind of boring because it's so limited in what you can do with it. The 50-50 coin, however, is kind of cool in my opinion, an idol that only has a 50% chance to succeed, which opens the door up for people to wonder if they should take a risk at voting out the coin holder or hedge their bets and play it safe. You feeling lucky, punk? With a 50% chance of succeeding, I think that kind of reduces the power of the idol, but it also creates a lot of chaos as to what could happen next. But otherwise, oh my god, my brain, yes, that is the gradual evolution of the hidden immunity idol in Survivor. I really think the conditional idol could be a cool future for idols, potentially with entire seasons themed around the new conditions. I wouldn't be surprised if fire tokens come into play too, potentially with how idols can be acquired. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you to my patrons for giving me half of your idol before the sun goes down. Don't forget, on your way out, when searching for the idol, just remember it's always going to be in the last place you look. And I will see you in the next one once I totally share the idol clue with you, man. That's what Survivor's all about, man. The damn social game. Man. Now, when it comes to keeping the secret, man, I, I, I can't do it. This idol still eludes you. It seems nowhere to be found. It's not buried or concealed, nor directly on the ground. Could be like in a tree. Tree mail I got in my pocket, man. That thing is definitely by far on the ground, so to speak. I mean, I can't give away too many clues because I'm trying to save my own ass, but it is totally on the ground. I think it's pretty amazing that Judd told everybody the clue that it's on the ground. And uh, I followed him back here and he's looking at the trees. It's pretty interesting. Where did Gary go? To search for the idol. To find the idol. That'd be amazing if he found it. Amazing. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs>